Thanks for joining me for MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. I'm Dan Adams. Today we're talking about how inertia friction welding was developed from direct drive and why different applications may be better suited for one versus the other. Today we're going to talk about rotary friction welding, uh, specifically direct drive, inertia, and hybrid, and how they all are based off of the direct drive friction welding cycle. We consider direct drive to be the foundation of rotary friction welding, and then we have variations uh, that allow us to do different things in different circumstances. So I'm going to start with explaining direct drive. We have a component that's attached to the spindle, uh, an electric motor that's going to drive it, and then we have one component that's held stationary in the tailstock fixture. We're going to rotate the part in the spindle up to a desired speed. Now we can do two speeds. We can have a speed that's associated with first friction, and this allows us to reduce the amount of torque at part contact uh, when we're at a higher speed. So if we need to, we have that lever to pull, but we're going to maintain that speed through first and second friction. And in that time frame, we're going to build heat uh, and we're going to start upsetting material. I start off at a low load that we call first friction, and this is really to scrub the components together, uh, make sure that they're, the surface condition uh, is conducive to reduce the coefficient of friction and start to build some heat. As soon as I get through that, I'm going to go to a slightly higher load where now I'm going to start upsetting material. And I'm going to stay in this second friction phase as long as necessary. And direct drive friction welding is nice from that aspect because I can add as much energy as I need to. So if I'm welding a hardenable steel, I can put a lot of extra heat in there. Yes, I'll get extra upset, but that will help me control the cooling rate uh, of a hardenable steel. With direct drive friction welding, we have a spindle limitation on the bearing side. So typically we have to decrease our spindle speed to zero before we can bring on forge load. Uh, and, and this allows me to complete the process and I squeeze out all of the hot material uh, when I bring on the forge load and I hold it and then the weld is complete. So when the inertia welding process was invented, they looked at some of the downsides of direct drive friction welding. The first one being this torque peak at part contact. Now I can overcome it with higher speeds in direct drive, and that's why you see a higher speed on the inertia side. But they also added a flywheel. So the inventor of the inertia welding process, Caterpillar Tractor Company, when they had issues with high torque applications stalling their, uh, their motors, they would add a flywheel to overcome that torque peak. So this is what we did. Now we store all the energy in that rotating flywheel, we disengage the drive, and we bring on forge load, and the kinetic energy stored in the flywheels are dissipated as heat. Now the other side is in order to shorten the weld time and get narrower heat affected zones, we brought on forge load from the beginning instead of going through a stepwise approach to load. So in order to accomplish this, we needed a hydrostatic spindle, again, because the thrust bearings couldn't take the high speed and the high load. So these were some of the innovations that allowed inertia welding to scale the friction welding process to large diameter components uh, or large diameters with uh, thin walls. So mostly used on the aerospace side, but it can also scale down to where I use a thin wall tube uh, welding into a plate where I need to make a weld really quickly. The third process is a hybrid. It's a combination of two. I have all the parameters of direct drive and the ability to manipulate the energy input uh, through the load profile and having an electric motor driving at a constant RPM, but I also attach the flywheel to it so that I can forge into the rotating spindle, get that extra hot working like I see in the inertia process, and get a slightly stronger bond as a result of it. So it is a combination of both inertia and direct drive that allows us to do a little bit more hot working if necessary after putting in a variable amount of heat. Now the nice thing is MTI does all three of these technologies. We can build a machine that is suited to your application and the needs of your application. So you come to MTI and we can deliver any one of these three to you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. For more information on this topic or other friction welding solutions, please visit our website at mtiwelding.com.